Hi, this is Siri Lam, back for video number four of our Google Classroom series, and we are moving out of the stream and into the Classwork tab. This will likely be our longest and most detailed video of the series, and that is because it is about creating assignments, which are really the powerhouse of how Google Classroom works. So I come here and I click on Create, and the top option is Assignment. This opens up the assignment panel that I have open to me here. I begin by putting in a title. I like to number my assignments as I go. You can put instructions. I highly recommend that you make instructions detailed enough for students to navigate them independently, especially at the beginning of the year to have a lot of clarity. You can edit it with bolding, italics, underlying, bullet points, etc. And then you have the ability to add in a number of different kinds of attachments. You can pull something from your Google Drive, a YouTube video. You can create Google Docs, Drive, Slides, all those kinds of things right in here. You can upload from your computer or you can put a URL. We're gonna start with our focus on pulling an attachment from Google Drive. I've inserted a document from my Google Drive that I want students to be able to have. And here's where I have three different options. I can either have it that students can view the file. When it's like this, the file is essentially like a PDF. Students can see it and there's not much else that they can do with it. Option number two is students can edit the file. That means that all students in the class have edit access on one single file. This is the least used option as there are only very specific use cases when you would want students to be able to edit your file. The one that perhaps is most is used most often is to make a copy for each student. What happens then is you have your original document and every student in your class gets their own copy with their name on it for them to be able to fill out. How do you know which one to choose? You need to decide what the purpose of the attachment is. Is it just information for students? Then students can view file is often enough. If it's something that students are going to be interacting with, a template of some kind, um, a worksheet, something that students are filling out, then you'll likely want to go with make a copy for each student. Then we're going to come over here to the right-hand panel to look at the different options that we have. The first thing that we have under four is we can choose which of our classes that we have. We want to assign it. We can assign to multiple classes at the same time. You can, if you only select one class, you can determine which students, I don't have any students in this class, so there is no list here, but otherwise I would be able to determine which students in my class should get this or shouldn't get this if this is something that's differentiated to only some students. I choose how many points the assignment is work or I can, worth or I can mark it as ungraded. I can set a due date here. I highly recommend always setting due dates. It helps students by giving them reminders. So I'll set a due date. You can set a day or a day and a time. And then you can choose, this is a brand new feature for 2023, to close submissions after the due date. What that will do is students will no longer be able to submit once the due date has passed in previous years it would just tell you marked as late but students could still submit so that's an option depending on your classroom policies we'll talk a little bit more about topics in the next video but this is where you would either choose from an existing topic although you could create a new topic right in here bricks will be covered uh, in an additional video together with originality reports and plagiarism then we come back up here to where it says assign. If you just click on this assign button, it would assign it right now at this moment to your classes. The alternative is to click on this drop down menu and then you have additional options. You can schedule the post to go at a later time or you can just save it as a draft if it's something that you're still working on. And what's actually very nice is if you are trying to send to multiple classes and those classes have different schedules, you can actually choose what is the published date for each one and what is the due date for each one and what's the topic for each one, or you can copy the same settings to all of the different classes. This just gives you some flexibility based on your schedule, based on your organization, based on the way that different classes that you have. Um, and that is essentially how we go about creating assignments. We give them a title and instructions. We add attachments of various types. 
and we can adjust how students interact with those attachments. And then we can look over here at the right-hand panel at all of our different options for keeping it organized, streamlined, um, and scheduled. I hope that this was helpful. I will see you back for the next video.